This is an overview of the PostGrid widget. The PostGrid widget can work with all sorts of filters to help users have a better user experience. And we have pagination, load more, infinite scroll, all the advanced stuff you need to make an awesome post grid. Without no more further ado, let's get started. To get started, you're going to want to make sure that you have unlimited elements for Elementor installed and activated on your WordPress website. Inside of unlimited elements, you can use the search to search for post grid, hover over the widget and click install to add it to the widgets pane inside of Elementor. I'm going to add the widget to my Elementor canvas, drag and drop. And what this widget does, it shows all of the posts inside of your website depending on the query that you determine, and I'm going to show that in just a second. Each post has an image, a title, some text, and a read more button. You can also add additional data over here inside of the additional data section. I'm going to jump into post query and show you how you can manage and filter the exact post that you want to show on the page. So the first and most important setting is for post source. Over here, we can have all sorts of different sources. The most common use case is custom post, but let's go over them. So current query post, this is for an archive page. So you're doing an archive template inside of Elementor uh, theme builder. You can add this to a archive template to show the posts in that archive. Of course, this supports pagination, load more, infinite scroll, and all that stuff. Custom posts going to come back to this one later related post is for a single post page so if you're also doing a single post template and you want to show related posts to that single post that the user is currently viewing for example more articles or products that might interest the user so this is what that is used for and manual selection inside of manual selection you can just type in all sorts of names for posts and select them manually add them one by one and there you go so custom post this one has a lot of advanced uh, selection options inside of our website we also show each and every single one of the options inside of include by you can see that you have all sorts of stuff over here but the most common use case is just to show them by and the category so right now i'm just going to select that category right now i'm showing in only desserts and actually let's go for cocktails so i'm going to search over here for cocktails there you go you can see that there are nine cocktails and they're showing really nicely over here we can also determine how many of them to show so for example if i want to show only three of them I can do that as well and we can set the ordering so this part is what posts we want to show and how many posts we want to show and in what order we want to show them so that's what this is part this part is for you can also exclude certain posts by all sorts of rules over here so really advanced stuff and uh, really extensive let's jump back into the general settings and over here we can decide what layout we want this in. Right now, the content is showing under. If we want to show it as an overlay while the user hovers over each item, we can do that as well. We can also change this, for example, to side by side, and now it's showing side by side, and that will look better if we have less columns. So I'm gonna change the number of columns over here to two, and you can see that that looks amazing. So let's go back, change this to under, which is the most common use case. And we can also change the gap over here. So this is a slider. You can also play with it and like this. I'm going to set that to 20 pixels. And you can change the post image size. This you will do maybe if you're doing SEO, you want to make the performance a little bit better. You can change this to whatever size you need to make it load as fast as you want. You can change the load more button. So for example, and I'm going to change this to learn more. And over here we have intro number of characters. I'm going to change that to 50. 
just so you can see how that looks. So 50 characters. There you go. You can change that to whatever you want. Show empty message. And that's just if there are no posts returning to your query, you can show an empty message. You can add a hover animation. So over here, you can see that. And you can also change the link type instead of same window. So when someone clicks, it will open in the same window. It can open in a new window. Image grow on hover. So I'm just going to turn that on. And now when you hover over these, this is the one I like the most. The image sort of has a subtle grow animation. The next part is for layout. So over here we can turn on or off each part. For example, if I don't want an image, I can turn that off. And I can add the categories. So I can show here categories. I can also show custom taxonomies or if I want tags or stuff like that. You can change the uh, HTML tag for the title and turn on the text or the button turn offer on the text or the button so the image over here is a link so you don't always need a button depending on the design and the needs and the user experience you're looking for the next part is a really cool part it's for additional data so we can add all sorts of data for example date time author we can show all of these over here so you can see right now I have turned all of those on, but we also have an option to show custom fields, which is a really nifty thing. And a lot of users use this widget just for that. So for example, if I have some event events plugin and I want to show the post grid, I want to populate it by custom posts, which are events. And I have some uh, custom fields like the price of the event that I want to show over here. So I can turn one of these on and just put in the meta field name. If you don't know what meta field names are available, you can turn on debug and it will show you what meta field names are available. Over here, I'm going to write in the meta field name that I've set up earlier. I've added these using advanced custom fields. And I've populated the custom fields. To each post and you can see that the difficulty over here is hard and you can also add some text before just so the user knows what this is referring to so for example i've added a label you can change the icon and you can turn you can turn on or off up to five of these so this is something really cool and unique which helps users sort of like a, a design the post grid in the way in the most efficient way for users uh, sometimes they want the users to see some of the additional data before opening that uh, certain page. Next part is for post pagination filtering. So over here, as you can see, we can enable post filtering. Currently, we have four types. So we have a pagination widget, which adds pagination. We have a load more and infinite scroll widget, which uh, sort of adds more posts to the page and we have a tabs filter and a drop down filter i'm going to show you all of them so first one is the pagination so over here in pagination after i turn on the enable post filtering i'm going to use pagination widget go to the widgets pane and i'm going to search for pagination drag and drop that inside and over here just to show you that we have a lot of settings i'm going to add previous next buttons and instead of showing all the pages, I'm just going to turn that off so it won't show so many pages. And I'm going to click update. So to view this, we need to view it in the live preview. So I'm going to click preview. And now we can use this to navigate between the different posts. And each time it's just going to show three posts because that's the maximum number of posts that we've set. So that's the pagination widget. You saw how easy it is to configure it. And that's the reason why we made it a separate widget. So you can connect it to all sorts of post widget. We have so many and you can connect it to each and every one of them. Only the ones that make sense, of course, but you can connect it to any of these. I want to add some more posts. So I'm going to add also desserts over here. 
And you can see that now it says no post found because it's searching for posts that have desserts and cocktails. I'm going to change that to or, the relation to or. So now we have some more posts. We have 16 posts because it's 7 and 9 together. And I'm going to turn off the additional data. Click update to save. The next thing I'm going to do is add a tabs filter. So I'm going to search for tabs filter. This Again, this is a separate widget. You're going to need to install it separately. Right now, it's showing all of the categories that we have set up on our WordPress website. Now, I don't want it to show all of these. I want it to show only the ones that are relevant to the post grid. So what I'm going to do is turn on sync to post after load. You can also manual select here in term selection, but this option is just quick for explanation purposes. So refresh the page, save and refresh, and now I can filter the post. And this works simultaneously with the pagination widget. So these work together and out of the box. You don't need to do anything. Look how nice that is. So everything is Ajax, facts and um, optimized for performance. The next one I'm going to show is the load more. So instead of a pagination, I'm going to add a load more. So that's it. <laughs> I've added it to the page. It's connected to the post grid. Going to save the page and I'm going to jump into the live preview. And now I can click load more and each time it's going to add three more of these. If you want, you can change that to be a infinite scroll, which is also pretty cool. I'm going to click update to save and refresh over here. And now each time that I scroll down, you can see that it's loading up to a certain point, And then it turns into a load more button. You can configure it over here. So it said do that load more three times and then turn it into a load more button. You can change the setting to whatever you want. And that's about it. Let's change the tabs filter now into a drop down filter. So I'm going to search for select drop down filter, delete the filter we've added before. And again, I'm going to just sync it. That's the most simple way, the easiest way out of the box. And inside the layout, let's just center that. Of course, this has all sorts of design options, and you can add more of the, more than one of these. I mean, if you have more than one taxonomy related to these posts. So for example, categories and tags or a custom taxonomy, you can also, so you can have multiple drop down filters and look how nice that is. I mean, it's working really, really nicely. And that's about it. So I think we've went over everything. Let's jump into style and see what we have under style. So um, again, our vision is to make it as flexible as possible with unlimited possibilities because that's the name unlimited elements and you can really see that you can go every single one of these uh, uh, settings and adjust it exactly to look how you want to fit your needs and you can uh, space between different elements so for example if i'll add some title spacing i space that so you have typography settings, color settings for every single part of the widget. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and I'll see you in the next video.